How's it going everybody? My name is Swanny and welcome back to another video. Guys, today we'll be reacting to Season 1 Episode 7 of Jujutsu Kaisen Assault. The last episode was pretty great. Left us on a cliffhanger with Gojo up against Mike. Uh, I'm not exactly too worried about Gojo just because he is the strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer of all. And he did say that he would win against a fully powered Skuna. And Scar said that Mike is only worth about 8 to 9 fingers, which is really impressive because the fact that Fushigoro struggled as much as he did only up against 3 fingers, to have someone that is 3 times more powerful than that is insane but also in comparison to gojo it's really not that crazy especially considering that gojo said that he could take a fully powered skuna and also the fact that gojo was able to detect mike and told ejg to stop the car so if mike could have gotten the jump on gojo then maybe i would have a different tune you know mike's coming in hot and gojo is just unbothered i mean doesn't even really care just is like yo dude what's your deal who are you like what do you want um yeah, and the fact that Gojo is also able to detect him just makes it seem like he's just not that strong. Which is really weird to think about considering that he's worth 9 fingers, which is 3 times more than that fight against Fushigoro, which is absurd. Like, that's really fucking strong. Skuna is the king of curses, and this curse is worth half of Skuna. To be the best and have someone worth half that is still, like, insane. I think power scaling wise, in my head, when Gojo says that he's the strongest and that he could beat Skuna, I must have him and Skuna like the same, maybe Gojo a little bit more. Like I still feel like the King of Curses versus the strongest. It's like, of course, the two number ones going at each other. So if you have someone who's half the strength of number one and you're about to face like the opposing upper one, if I was Gojo, I wouldn't be nervous either. Like that's just not that big a deal. And also the fact that Scar says that you can't even beat him, you just have to render him incapable of fighting. Maybe that cursed object is why Mike is so confident. Oh shit. Maybe the fact that Mike knows that he has the prison realm and he's like, you know, Gojo, I know I can't beat you, but guess what? I don't even need to do that. I can just render you incapable of fighting with the prison realm. You know, I'll seal you and trap you in here. And that's just that. Maybe that's why he's so confident. Oh, yeah. One of Gojo's the strongest too. Then he's going to sleep on Mike because he's like, yo, dude, I can detect you coming. You're really not that strong. You're really not a threat. So he's going to let his guard down. Oh, man. And Gojo's by himself, too. I wonder if Ijichi's gonna call that in. Damn. Yeah, I can see Gojo's, like, prideful and, like, cockiness kind of leave his guard down. And then Mike kind of capitalizes on that. Because Mike is coming in confident. Like, he's yelling, he's screaming, he's smiling. Yeah, especially with Mike, like, getting confident and, you know, getting hot and burning everyone in the store. He's like, yeah, I got this. Like, Gojo, man, I got the prison room. Like, I'm good. I think that's where that confidence is coming from. Which is really not good because... Not only does he have like an ace card, but Gojo's also underestimating him because he's, well, half of Skuna, which is probably more than half, or I'm sorry, less than half of Gojo. Does that make sense? So if Gojo and Skuna are like neck and neck, assuming Skuna's at full strength, then that means that Mike would be half of Gojo, and but but he's got the prison realm to trap him. I wonder, damn, I wonder how that, anyway, I'm just, I, I just want to jump in, uh, but I do have a couple of notes to go over, a couple important things. I'm not going to get into it to the same extent as I did in the outro discussion of the last video, but basically, from my understanding and Gojo's great analogy, being that cursed energy is like electricity, has to be channeled through something, and when you channel it through appliances, too much will blow it up, too little won't make it work, so you have to do it like just right, like you have to really get it down pat. So... Right now, Itadori is training with a doll where he is kind of using cursed energy into the doll. And if he uses too much, it'll wake it up. And if he doesn't use enough, so basically he has to keep the cursed energy as stable as it possibly can. And Gojo is using movies to kind of, I guess, let Itadori experience different things. So if Itadori were to get excited, I guess output a certain or a different kind of energy into the doll, it would wake it up. You know, if he were to get, so I guess Itadori has to stay the same emotion i guess but as the guy was cutting the wire i didn't see an emotional reaction on itadori but i guess you know his cursed energy reflected that he did react but basically the doll woke up and punched him uh there were a couple great references to other anime we saw bankai kamehameha and rasengan love that um yeah great analogy from gojo with the electricity and appliances it made it really easy to understand which i really appreciate considering how this cursed technique and curses and cursed energy is so different from that of super saiyan 1 Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, right? It's, it's a lot more complex. So my last note from the last episode is if it starts to get hot at work, quit. Survival instinct, you're probably going to burn alive. There's probably a mic in there ready to kill you. So yeah, I mean, that's all the notes I have from the past episode. I'm just excited to get in this one. I want to see what the hell is about to happen. Um, I don't have a good feeling for Gojo on this one just because Mike is coming in really confident with a cursed object, something that Gojo doesn't know about. Would Gojo know about the prison realm? And also considering how strong Gojo is and that like kind of cocky attitude, 
he would also underestimate Mike. So yeah, I, I don't really have a good feeling about this episode. So yeah, that's all the notes I have over the last episode. I'm just excited to get in this one. So with all that being said, without further ado, let's jump right into Assault. Yeah, I mean, he's confident. Oh my god. Oh, wow. Damn! Surely that wouldn't get Gojo. I mean, he seemed unprepared, but... Oh, okay, yeah. Damn. Who are you calling easy? Shit. Yeah, he's a, he's a high IQ one. Oh. Unregistered? Oh, I see, I see. Oh god, a Gojo saying that this is fun? You guys already know when a strong character says this is fun. <laughs> it's about to go crazy. Gotcha. That is pretty smart. Oh, he like glitched. Bro. With two fingers? <laughs> Dude! Uh Damn. I wouldn't be so sure. I don't think Gojo would go down that easy. Yeah, the the anime walk away. I was about to say, didn't that just happen too? <laughs> Bro, he's like It's like Skuna, so patronizing Yeah, it's true, no hostility, might as well It's like the force? Infinity? Wow. Wow! That's actually so overpowered. Oh! Oh! Nah, he's different! Oh, it's like stopping right before- Yeah! The closer it is, the slower it goes. That's crazy! <laughs> Infinity. Curse technique reversal red. What is that? <gasps> Damn. This is nine fingers. Ooh, okay! Nah, the music! Bro, this is nice! Bro, the animation on that technique was clean! Oh, the angles! Oh my god, nah, this is peak! Oh, the eyes! Bro, I love an anime when they do, like, the eye streak to show how fast they're going. Oh. Jogo. Ah, I like Mike. He warned him. But where's the prison room? What? <laughs> is this the Hobbit? It is! 
is Sam. Oh my god, bro! They did a great job animating like I hate to say cartoon, but I guess like an animated Hobbit, dude. That's really good. Domain expansion? Bro, I'm confused. Was that was that just now? It was! Dude, that's actually crazy. Bro, in the middle of a fight, Gojo just warped back to pick up Itadori. He's like, um, yeah. We got uh we got a lesson. We got a lesson to, to go over and picked him up, bro. I can't. Oh my god. Gojo's using this as a teaching experience? I can't. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> nah, Gojo... Gojo's different. I'm... I'm actually... Nine fingers is weak? Oh my god, bro. Yeah, Gojo is just on another level then. There's... But again, I hope he doesn't let his guard down. Domain expansion. This is what Skuna did. Wow. Oh. Bro, this animation is clean. The lava looks so nice. Coffin of the Iron Mountain. Alright, I'll, I'll give him that. Mike, you got a cool ass name for your, uh, your domain. That's pretty sweet. Coffin of the Iron Mountain. Yeah, it really looks nice too. Yeah, there's how that is animated or drawn. It's clean. <laughs> no way! Like a buff in a video game? Oh, so it's like environmental advantage. I see. Oh. That makes sense. Oh, okay. So they can't they can't just up and leave. So it, it'll actually hit Gojo. <laughs> Damn. He's like, I came here for shits and gigs, but this is actually uh, insane. Oh? Is he not blind? I thought we were dealing with like a daredevil. Okay. Oh my god! Wow! Holy shit! <laughs> yeah! Bro, I'm... Wow! Bro, this looks insane! Wow, what a... Bro, Gojo... I mean... Bro, his eyes... Oh my god. He's kind of, you know, I mean... <laughs> I mean... I don't swing that way, but... Bro, he looks completely different. Damn! Oh, just like... Bro, what? Dude, he's... Bro, he's... I mean, 
fuck, he's fine. Shit. Bro, what a scene. What a scene. Bro, Gojo's domain? Wasn't even like a place. Like, like Skuna or Mike's. Oh my god. Bro, I gotta rewatch that. <laughs> what? Dude, Gojo's cracked. Bro, he ripped his head off! Yeah, the thing looks crazy. <laughs> Eat a dory. That's so funny. That would be a great feat to be strong enough to take out nine fingers worth. Gojo's domain was so captivating. I suppose fighting the best is a, a great training method. Oh, true, because Nobara and Fushiguro don't know he's alive. Oh. Because Ijichi was driving Gojo to meet the principal, that's right. Yeah, well, I guess Gojo uh, got a little distracted. Okay. So Scar just lives in an <laughs> apartment? It's so, like... Okay. <laughs> um. Squiddy! <laughs> That's true. I, I thought he straight up died, but I guess curses can live with just their heads. I mean, to be fair, Scar did warn Mike. He was like, yo, if you go, you'll, you'll die. Okay, so he didn't use the prison realm. Mahito. Wow. Bro, this guy looks crazy too. Bro, what an episode. What an episode. Oh my god, I have so many notes to go back and take. Okay. Brazilian calisthenics. So you've got these evil looking dudes doing calisthenics. What are we doing? Like, <laughs> These Juju Strolls are always so funny. No way they're playing soccer with Mike's head. <laughs> and like, it's like a cutesy voice now too. No way. Goal. What a save, what a save, what a save. <laughs> oh my god. I gotta go back and rewatch what the hell that was. Oh, <laughs> he's watching. Bro, I'm shocked that Gojo was able to come back, talk to Yuji. Oh, I didn't even catch that. I was so busy thinking. So Itadori's been able to keep the doll asleep. Nice. I really thought Mike was going to use the prison realm. Yeah, the domain expansion. Coffin of the Iron Mountain. It's a damn cool name. I like that. Yeah, it was animated really nice. It's crazy how they got the lava to look like that. The domains are basically like a home field advantage. And like, they give you not only that buff, but the attacks are guaranteed to hit. Okay, so I thought Gojo was like a daredevil type character where he just was that cracked blind. Because why else would you need a blindfold? Well, yeah, so why does he need a blindfold? Bro, he's majestic. Infinite void? Bro, this is insane. It's so much, it never stops. It's never complete. So it's like, just an, just like an infinite flux of... Look at him. When granted everything, you can't do anything. Bro, what a line. Dude, and the way that was animated too. Bro, what a scene. Yeah, when Scar like opened up the apartment, I was like... 
this guy that talks to like these insanely strong curses just has an apartment. I was like, that's cool. And then we, f and then we get a fucking portal to the beach. What does Squiddy do? Like, it seems like such a innocent curse, <laughs> but curses are supposed to be bad. And Squiddy's hanging with these guys, so. Bro, what an episode. Holy shit. Oh my god. Guys, I'm sorry if I didn't react there towards the end. I was just... I was... <laughs> I was like, uh... I, I want to say Mike, but I want to get the name right. I was like Jogo. Bro, I was like Jogo. I was like... I was seeing everything happen at once. And I, I guess I was also caught in uh, Gojo's infinite void because I was trying to comprehend everything I was just seeing and... Comp yeah, and just trying to, like, digest it. And I just could not do it in real time. For all this time, I've been thinking that Gojo was blind. And because he couldn't see, he had to rely on instinct and, like, sound and, like, his surroundings for cursed energy and be able to sense it out. What a technique. Infinite void and infinity. It's so, it's like, it's like God tier. Like, it's almost like, like as we were like zooming through space and time and he said like every single possibility playing out at once, but it's all incomplete. When granted everything, you can't do anything. Like, bro, look at like, what a line. Oh my God. Yeah, but his eyes, I mean, guys, he's, um, he's, uh, you know, um, just give me, just give me one second. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just had to go to the bathroom real quick. Um, but uh, yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, um, yeah, Gojo. Uh, I mean, I mean, it, he he got me. How can you look at this and just? I mean, guys. I mean, I mean, guys. It's a good thing you didn't tell me to stand up when I uh, saw this because I mean, <laughs> I mean, shit. I mean, Gojo. <clears throat> <laughs> Guys, all jokes aside, I mean, he's a good looking dude. Very beautiful. Uh, the eyelashes with the blue eyes and the white hair. Definitely majestic. Definitely a good looking character. I'm just kind of confused. Then what's the point of the blindfold? No, because I thought the, again, I thought the blindfold was because he couldn't see. So he had this like extra sense, like this extra heightened sense to, I guess, feel cursed energy, which would make sense as to how he could sense Jogo or Mike. Um, but I guess that's just not the case. Oh, I mean, it just looks like an ocean or galaxy. It looks like a planet. I mean, he's got some beautiful eyes, and I do love the contrast between that blue and the red of the, the coffin of the Iron Mountain. It does look, it does look really clean. But I guess that just confuses me as to why he even needs a blindfold in the first place. I feel like I was so busy reading subtitles and thinking and digesting on information, I completely missed the action. But even then, when I was so captivated by Gojo's face, I completely missed like some really cool captions that I wish I had delved on while watching i just was so like i was still trying to digest what i was just just witnessed the infinite void man it's a clean fucking domain so they really gave us the names to all these curses this episode we have jogo who is the volcano head mike uh we have hanami we've got ghetto who is scar uh mahito which is a new character the one with like the stitches stitches yeah it's like it's like stitch design and Squiddy, we didn't get any more information on Squiddy, so I'm still gonna call him that. I don't know Squiddy's deal, like, it's pretty innocent, cute looking curse, so I'm, I'm confused as to what it's doing hanging around the crew. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, there's no way Scar lives just, like, in an ordinary apartment. Um, cause, you know, he was talking to some pretty strong curses, and the way he kind of, like, calls the shots, too, when my, or when, uh, Jogo came back, he was like, yo, like, what the heck? And the guy was like, eh, sorry, like, I, you know, I told you, but, eh. Yeah, Gojo used Cursed Technique Reversal Red. Pretty damn cool. I love how they animated that. The music, once, like, it started to come in, once he really started to let it rip and let loose, uh, that was super clean. And then, yeah, hits him through the forest. Mike's laying out in the lake, and Gojo warps back to pick up Itadori. He pulls up, he's like, oh, wow, yeah, Itadori's doing a really good job training. As if he's not just beat the shit out of Mike. And it's like, it's funny because he's like, oh, yeah, I just got here. I also have a lesson I got to teach you right now. Also, great job keeping your cursed energy under control with the doll. Uh, but I have to teach you a lesson about domains. So here, come with me. They warp back. I was confused timeline-wise where we were, but Gojo was like, yep, here we are. Uh, I got to teach you now, so just pay attention. Uh, Mike is like, yo, isn't he just going to slow you down? And Gojo's like, no, you want to know why? Because you're weak. Jogo did not like the fact that Gojo called Jogo Gojo. <laughs> Jogo Gojo. Jogo Gojo. 
Jogo did not like the fact that Gojo called him weak, uh, set off his domain, Coffin of the Iron Mountain, super sick name, also really cool domain. The analogies have been really nice as far as helping understand like what a domain entails. Ichidori is like, yo, so is it like a buff from a video game? And Gojo was like, yeah, kinda. You know, it's like a buff, but also you get that home field advantage, like attribute advantage. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and rewatch this episode just because I know I missed that in conversation with Geto and Mahito, and also a couple technicalities within like the domains and what Ichidori was doing because even going back at the end of this episode I missed so many subtitles um I was really just kind of soaking up the animation dude the animation was nice the music was so fitting it was like it amped up as soon as Gojo started amping up and I really liked it this was definitely an action-packed episode and I know that I missed a lot so I don't actually have a whole lot to discuss here other than other than Mike getting absolutely clapped oh the uh infinity the closer you get the slower you are is that not overpowered because that seems insane so basically nothing can make contact with him unless he makes contact with him as we saw as he like touched his hand and like went and um <laughs> grabbed his hand and then literally held him so tight he couldn't get away as he's like punching into him and letting it rip <laughs> gojo going to pick up itadori in the middle of the fight is crazy this is one of my favorite lines from the show it's ironic isn't it when granted everything you can't do anything dude that's that's clean as fuck. I mean, uh, pardon my French, but that's so sick. Crazy how Hanami's technique was able to render Gojo, like, not even incapable, but, you know, he was kind of under the influence for, like, four seconds there, you know? Like, do that again and capitalize on that four seconds, and that could be dangerous. Damn. Oh, man. I, I mean, if you think about it, do that to Gojo again, four seconds. I don't know how long it takes to get someone in the prison room. But that would have been a great opportunity there. But Mike didn't have a head, so <laughs> he, he truly became Mike Wazowski, bro. He just a, just a ball with an eye. Yeah, he really embodied uh, Mike Wazowski in this episode, <laughs> bro. I don't even know what to think right now. I'm yeah. So <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna go back and watch this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy, I have the full reaction on Patreon. Also, the Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. All right. Hope you all all have a good one.